right at first glance capacitors actually don't look too bad the legs aren't eaten off everything looks fairly well but I do have one thing I'm gonna try that I saw one time just to see if I can see any hidden stuff leaking out of them the experiment I wanted to try was taking a picture of the board while it was under a UV light because oftentimes like around the capacitors you'll see the uh, where the other one go there he is you'll see the electrolyte glowing it'd be kind of all white glow you can kind of see around the edges here how it's glowing yellow that's showing up under the uh, UV light but in this case the caps aren't leaking I don't see anything but I'm gonna replace them anyway I'm gonna do an experiment this time around and I'm gonna use some aluminum polymer caps which won't leak they don't have liquid electrolyte in them like the original style did with the exception of this one I had a whole set that I was gonna use and I couldn't find one of them so I guess I'll just have to use a standard style in the other position. The 47 microfarads have a much higher voltage rating. The original voltage rating was 16 volts. Uh, the standard electrolytic I have is a 50 volt and then the aluminum polymer is a 25 volt. It's interesting though how the size of the capacitor is not much bigger than the old school 16 volt one just by the way they make things nowadays. Ground plane's hard to get heated up. There we go. First one out. Sometimes you just gotta burn it through. Flux on there. side. Takes a lot more heat. Oh no, it wasn't the ground. Yeah, it was the ground plane side. You can see I got it in there. I got a little crazy with the solder though. It went through a lot better than it did last time I did this. So I had to take a little bit of it out. Okay, I got the caps installed. I didn't show much of the installation process because you either fall asleep or want to take your life by the time I was finished doing it, but I did get the two aluminum polymers put in, and then I got the standard one put in. And as I was looking at this thing, I noticed that uh, that looks like the EEPROM chip. So it makes me wonder if, if you were to pull that out of there, and you had the proper EEPROM reader, 
if you could dump the code off that, because I know there's some lightning owners out there that would greatly appreciate being able to do that. Okay, enough of that. We'll get this thing put put together, get it put back in the truck, see how it works. Because if it doesn't work, I could always throw the flux capacitor in there. That might be kind of cool. All right, got it all installed. Got the battery hooked back up. Pop in. See how it, see how it starts at least. My guess is it'll probably be all right. so good I don't yeah I think we're all right won't know for sure till I get it going down the road but seems okay next I gotta do something about this mess